Okay, y'all. So now we're going to talk about Esau and Edomite. Because that's a hot topic now. Who are they? How do we identify them? Can they be identified? And what the word actually says in regards to Esau and Edom. See, I'm here to make things a bit more clear. And this video is targeted towards children of Israel, sons of men. Because I know y'all are up to here with this Edomite Babylonian system. I know y'all are really angry. And I know that some of you think that the use of your hands in violence is how you will get free from this system. Because I know a lot of us feel like slaves, even though they say we're free. But even as I say that, I got to be of truth at all times, at all times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about Esau and Edomite that's written in the scripture. But I'm also going to talk to you about what the Most High said in his word. And not only in the written scripture, but in the word that was his son. And the word of life, which is wisdom. Okay? Because wisdom brings you immortality. Wisdom is that little salt bay. That's what wisdom is. And you got to look at the world, not only in your anger and your trauma, but in the world to come. Okay? So now we're going to talk about Esau and Edomite. First and foremost, people identify Esau and Edomite as white people. But in the scripture, it's described as ruddy, which means red. And it's also described as hairy. And also a small amount of people. See, the thing is, family, is that that description, going by physicality alone, is far too vague for you to umbrella it as only being white people. Let me tell you why. First and foremost, we have black people that are ruddy. You red, red bone. Not only do we got black people that are ruddy, we got black people that are ruddy and hairy too. So again, if we're going by the physical description, you still don't know for sure. Now, you go by the treatment of a people, right? You go by that idea. But again, are all white people responsible for your enslavement? If that was the case, let's look at the Arabic slave trade. Let's look at all them Asians over there in our country, Jamaica right now. Are white people the only people enslaving us? No. So there's an issue with your understanding. There's an issue. What the word says to you is that on the day of the Lord, Esau and Edomite shall become civil. When you wait for the Most High who can actually judge in truth. You cannot judge off of what you see. Because again, you only have two eyes in front of you. And you don't know the hearts of people. You can't make that decision. And the reason why I bring this up right now. Is because there are Edomites and Esau's. But I'm talking about a seed. See me? I could get hot, man. <laughs> Man, I used to be like in these streets for real. But the thing is, when you find Christ, you find truth. And the truth is, with our own two eyes, we cannot determine who is righteous and who is not. Because it's all about showing. It's all about what you can see. But it's not true judger of hearts. How do we know this in real life? Well, let's sprinkle some wisdom, shall we? A neighbor living next to this man for seven plus years. Man, they got, they get along. <laughs> yeah, he says hello and all of that. <laughs> man, he will help him off, give him the shirt off his back. <laughs> and one day, a whole bunch of news reporters is on the street. Houses getting broken into. Then he hears that the same man that he'd been saying hello to for years, nice as all day, was doing some extremely evil stuff to the children that was living in his house. But you wouldn't know better because all you see is the image of what somebody presents. You can't judge hearts. You can't judge images because you don't have that knowledge, that ultimate morality knowledge, that knowledge of God that only God can possess. You don't have it, human. You don't. When it comes to Esau and Edomite, my friends, real talk, you can't determine if they are white people. You can't. You can't determine it by the scripts, and I've perused it extensively, even read Apocryphas, just to find out if there was some inclination to tell me that they are the white people. There was none. But you know what was very clear? The Jews that are pretending to be Jews will be at our feet, not because we made them do it, but because the son he sent will require that of them. Imagine that. 
You guys got to recognize the truth. And if you don't, and if you don't see me for who I am in truth, I'm afraid that you will die by the sword. And all the sinners of his people shall die by the sword. I mean, the most I can raise them up, but still. That's what you want. When we read Obadiah, these people are in the clefts of the rock. What, what Barbara, Su Barbara and Susie down the street, white as mayonnaise, living on the same block as me. They ain't on high. They ain't in the clefts of rocks. They ain't, in, they ain't thumbs. Come on. We got to be of truth. If we're not of truth, then how can we say we're Israelites? How can we say we're holy people? How can we say that we are children of the light? We can't because we living in darkness. A blind man cannot see. So you, you got to be realistic, family. You got to. That's why I talk to y'all the way I do. I like to be real talk, you know, because it's easy. You know, I see a little white bread. I'm like, toast him up, burn him up, get up. But I'm like, that, that doesn't seem right. Something doesn't seem right about that. I don't know. Because I like my white bread with a little butter on it. When a battery is put in your back to go commit violence against the people, just simply because of how they look, you are being led to captivity. You are going to die by the sword. Because every blood that you shed, the Most High will require it of you. That's how it works. You didn't give birth. You did not create these human beings. Why do you think you can take it out? Without the directive, without most high. Because I don't know who this Joseph is that y'all talking about. But he ain't the real deal. I think, I think about my real life. Wisdom, right? My friend was murdered. Her son was murdered. But, you know, I have a good view of death. Like, it's like, I don't see it as like a whole bunch of people do. I think it's normal. People are gonna die every day, B. But one of the things that really hurt me about the death is that somebody thought it was okay to take someone's child. Take someone's child who, who had that baby in her stomach for nine months. Went through labor to bring that baby in here. Take that child and do something to it. Murder that child. Simply because they thought it was the right thing or the good thing to do. How dare you? How dare you? When you were not responsible for the blessing of that child coming into that earth, but you think you can take it out? And you think that's righteous? Ask yourself that in wisdom. Look at a child and think that you're going to murder that child because they're white. Think about that. Think about how many times these people here, these people in charge, whether they were white or whatever, Thought they could do that to black children all because they thought it was the right thing to do. Take over a creation that they never created and kill a creation that they never created. Think about, think about things in truth. Think about it. Imagine a baby that come on this world. Listen, I know what happened with the Egyptians. But did y'all do that to the babies? No. And at the end of the day, the most high who is responsible for the life that is here, God giveth and God taketh away. It's not my job as a human being, as a mere creation, to come on here and say what is right or wrong when it pertains to, a, to, to the ultimate creator. That's not my job. But as human beings, as brother and sister, as brethren on this earth right now, you must know, you must feel in your spirit, right, that there's something wrong. By judging a whole group of people without actually knowing their hearts, there's something wrong with that. Outside of just looking at somebody color or hair or whatever you recognize in truth in love because that's what the most High does he want us to even pray for our enemies man that's hard for me because them people that did that stuff to that child it's hard for me to pray for them but i do anyways not because of me really but because that's what christ deemed as righteous when when we look at somebody outside of the looks outside of this flesh Recognize that they all do the same things that y'all do. We, we talk about so many differences here. But the truth is, everybody doing the same thing. <laughs> when it comes to the fundamental, to the foundation. Everybody eating. Everybody breathing. Everybody drinking. Everybody doing everything that requires us to maintain a life. So why would you then think that the righteous thing for you to do is to offer a whole bunch of people that you don't even know is guilty? And I get it. <laughs> we angry. I get it. We're angry. I'm angry too. Believe it, like, it's hard. It's hard to just keep, like, getting smacked, getting smacked, and I, <laughs> it's hard. But when you recognize that the world we are to experience, 
the promise of what is our inheritance, what is to come, would make everything that these people have that are on high look like poverty. You get what I'm saying to you? I speak to y'all in wisdom, bro. Y'all don't know who the Esau's and Edomites are exactly. Just going according to that script, you don't know and you cannot make that decision. You can't do it. If you're going to move like a holy people, why why would you then move like dogs? Make it make sense. When we talk about Edomite and Esau, which is why I can't move like on a militant vibe. I can't do it in truth. Because I'm always moved by truth. In the Israelite, there is no God. I can't go in according to that written word. Going according to the scriptures, ever make an assessment that the Esau and Edomites are all white people. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Because when I look at who God deemed, who God, what God deemed as holy, as righteous, people that take care of the fatherless, the widow, the orphan, the poor, and I've seen people that are not my color doing that too. How in the world could I ever make a judgment like that? How in the world could you ever be seen as a holy people, not realizing that to be holy is to be something of the light, to be something of God? Look at a baby and tell me that you can murder that baby simply because that person came out white. You're going to do that to the albino too? And let me just tell y'all this. I'm not here as so I'm like, oh my gosh, white people. I'm not, I'm not doing that here. What I'm saying is, I don't have the credentials nor the qualifications to ever deem a whole people. That's just not, I can't do it in truth. And if you're a true Israelite, then in you, there should be no God. You can't look at a people and say, oh, they eat the mites and these sorts. When you can't even, you can't even back that up in the scripts. You can't. There is no evidence in the scripts that says it's explicitly white people. And you can never go by that. But the truth is, is that beyond the flesh, because we're all going to perish. We're all going to die in the flesh. It's the truth. Unless we're risen up. But beyond the flesh, there will be a judgment. Let me bring this movie up. Green Mile. Very good movie. And this part is very deep. It's a part where John Candy, big guy, um, was accused of doing all this stuff. And, you know, he didn't do it. He's actually an innocent person that came from the light, it seems, from God. And Tom Hanks looks at him and he says... What will I say to God on my judgment day? That I took one of his angels because it was my job? Why would you do such a foolish thing? On the day of my judgment, when I stand before God and he asks me why did I, did I kill one of his true miracles, what am I going to say? That it was my job. It was my job. You tell God the Father, it was the kindness you done. When you decide to sully your hands in blood, when the blood is life, it's life. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. When you decide, I'm gonna take somebody's life because of how they look. Then how could you ever say you're a holy person? How? Come on, tribes of Israel. Y'all gonna look at me and say to me, I'm evil and all of that because I can't back it. I can't. You don't have evidence. A holy person is of the spirit and could never be of the flesh. Whether that's looking at someone's flesh and, and whatever. You can't. A holy person deals in the spirit. A holy person recognizes that we're all one, regardless. We're all brother and sister on this planet. Outside of what these authorities have pushed on us to do and fight, we're all one. And the true God is of love, is of light, is of truth. And as there is a judgment and there will be a punishment, because that, all that nonsense they're talking about, oh, nothing is going to happen. Oh, yeah, okay, that's cute. There's a punishment, but it's not for us to deal with. As we are here in this world right now, this world ain't all we have. This world will not be all we have, children of Israel. Y'all hear what a, a person of truth is saying. Someone who is angry just like y'all. <laughs> yeah, I'm angry. They say to be holy means to be blessed. Blessed. You know what God's blessing is? It's life. More life. If, if you're 
ending is going to end in a headstone. It's going to end in you captivity. It's going to end by you dying by the sword. Then you are not holy. You are not blessed. As much as you may take the riches and the wealth of those you've stolen it from. You are not blessed. To be blessed is to be holy. It's to be of love. And I'm learning that every single day. Because even as I, I don't want to. I pray for my own enemy. Because it's not, it's not our creation. It's not. The sign of Jonah, right? Jonah thought he knew it all. Oh, those people are wicked. Let them go. But God said, no. You got to show love, right? Because we, we're just here for God's good pleasure, right? The Esau and Edomite are a seed. They're a seed. They come from a being who was a murderer from the very beginning. That's why they don't have that connection to the divine. And they never will. But you, as a holy person who has been blessed enough to know God or to, to even know the presence, even, even if you read that scripture and you say, wow, this makes sense to me. This, this is something my soul is understanding. You are blessed. You are blessed. Are you going to give your blessings away for people who don't, who don't even know God, who are not, who not, who don't have that internal like connection, you gonna do that? All because of what? Because of the flesh that dies, that perishes. Listen, man, Christ took mad hits, mad hits, and not once did he raise. Yeah, as he never raised his hand nor his sword, he was raised up by the Most High. Always remember why you are doing what you are doing. Why you are doing what you are doing and then it will all make sense to you is that you want to be reconciliated with the most high. Because that was really what's, what, what hurts us the most. What brings all this suffering and sorrow onto us is the separation from the most high. The most high is not an evil being. It's not an evil God. The most high is of love and is of light. That's, that's what the most high is. To think of the Most High as simply as like this carnage and all of that. That's not what the Most High really is. The Most High showed us through his son what was pleasing to him, guys. And if you think that you're going to move in anger to a people, you're sadly mistaken. And let me tell you something. If color was what constituted what was righteous, then we wouldn't have a whole bunch of people who are black doing some evil stuff. I mean, some cedar serpent stuff. It doesn't make any sense. If you look at it in truth, you know. Truth is something that people have a hard time with here. People hate truth, which is sad. Me, I love it. I'll even tell the truth about myself. I'm not Mr. Perfect. Never said I was. I actually come from sin, man. When I tell y'all I was a real sinner, like, sin sinner. Who got the keys to my freedom? I am not. No more. I have it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm real goofy, guys. But yeah, real talk. Though. The idea of being holy and righteous is repentance, obedience, love, light, truth. Let things get spicy at the end of the world. Because it's, it's going to be hot. <coughs> Promise you that. This place is reserved for fire. But what y'all going to do?